Pam here. Today we're celebrating Valentine's Day. Oh, one of the best days of the year. So the book we're reading is Valentine's Day by Alex Flanagan and illustrated by Shelley Dietrich. Let's get started. How Valentine's Day began. Many stories tell how Valentine's Day began. Some people believe the holiday came from a festival that Romans celebrated more than 2,000 years ago. They call the festival Lupercalia, and it was given in honor of the Roman god Luper, Lu, Lupercus. Sorry. Roman shepherds believed that Lupercus protected their crops and animals from hungry wolves. To thank Lupercus, the shepherds held a feast in his honor on February 15th. At that time, the Roman calendar was different from the one we use today. The month of February came later in the year, so on, on the feast day of Lupercalia, the Romans also celebrated the beginning of spring. The day before Lupercalia, all the girls put their names in a jar. Each boy drew a name. The girl whose name he chose became his partner for games. Sometimes the two promised to marry each other. The festival of Lupercalia changed when the Romans became Christians. The Romans did not believe in Lupercus anymore. They wanted to keep the holiday, however. The Romans decided to rename the holiday St. Valentine's Day. There are many stories about this man. In one story, Valentine broke the law. The emperor would not let any of his soldiers marry. He believed that single men made better soldiers. Valentine did not agree. He helped young men and women get married. The emperor put Valentine in prison for disobeying the law. Then on February 14th, 2069 AD, he put Valentine to death. Christians never forgot Valentine's courage. Every year on February 14th, they honored him. They thought about what he did for love. Flowers for Valentine's. Another story tells how Valentine helped a blind girl to see Valentine love children. He also loved flowers and had a beautiful garden. Often he gave children flowers from his garden. One day, the emperor put Valentine in prison because he would not pray to the Roman gods. Children brought flowers to Valentine in prison. They tossed them through the bars of the prison window. On the flowers, they put love notes to him. They drew birds and flowers on the notes. Valentine made friends with a prison guard. The prison guard's daughter was blind. Valentine prayed that the girl might see again. God answered Valentine's prayers and the girl's sight returned. The emperor said he would free Valentine if he prayed to the Roman gods. Valentine refused. The emperor put Valentine to death on February 14th. Before Valentine died, he wrote a note to the guard's daughter. He signed it, From Your Valentine. How Valentine's Day spread. Over time, and in other countries, brought the holidays. In time, people in England also celebrated Valentine's Day. They added some of their own customs. In one custom, boys and girls wrote names on pieces of paper. They rolled the pieces of paper into a ball of clay. Then they dropped it into a bucket of water. Soon the clay ball fell apart. It was said that if a boy or girl name, boy or girl's name floated to the top, that one day they would marry that boy or girl. Later, Valentine's Day spread to other countries. In Italy, young men and women met in flower gardens on Valentine's Day. They listened to music and read poems. In Austria, Hungary, and Germany, Valentine's Day was a religious feast day for boys. Each boy picked the name of a saint. He tried to live like that saint during the year. In France, young men and women went to fancy dances on Valentine's Day. At the dance, the men gave the women flowers. In Germany, girls believed they could find out who their husbands would be on Valentine's Day. They planted onions in pots. Next to each onion, they placed the name of a boy. They put the pots near a fireplace. Then. They waited for the first onion to grow. The girls believed that they would marry the boy whose name was nearest the onion. The first paper valentines. 
Over the years, more and more people learned how to read and write. They sent love letters to their sweethearts. Later, these letters were called valentines. People decorated valentines with hearts and flowers. They also drew birds and little babies on them. Today, the oldest paper valentine is in the British Museum in London, England. The Duke of Orleans wrote that valentine to his wife in 1415. He was a prisoner in the Tower of London. The English liked paper valentines very much. They wrote poems and then decorated them with rhythms and lace. Those who did not know what to write looked in a little book of poems called A Valentine Writer. A Valentine Writer cost a penny. Most valentines at this time were made by hand. Sometimes people asked artists to make valentines for them. Artists made fancy paper lace valentines. It cost a lot to send a letter by mail back then. Most people gave their handmade valentines to their sweethearts themselves. Later, the cost of mailing a letter dropped to a penny. Then people began to send valentines. Soon, more and more people celebrated Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day comes to America. In the 1700s, Americans often got valentines from their friends in England. They had no time to celebrate Valentine's Day, however. They were too busy trying to survive in, the new, in their new country. Valentine's Day didn't catch on in America until much later. In many of the first American Valentines, men asked women to marry them. American Valentines Americans liked to make Valentines called True Love Knot and Endless Love Knot. People who made these Valentines drew hearts connected at the sides. They wrote the words of love along the edges of the hearts. Another American Valentine was the Pinprick Valentine. A pinprick valentine was made by poking holes in the edges of a paper with a sewing needle. Others made acrostic valentines. The first letter of the word on each line spelled out their sweetheart's name. Later valentines were made by machine. Between 1906 and 1919, American factories began making valentines cards. Companies such as Hallmark, American Greetings, and Gibson started them. The heart is a favorite symbol of Valentine's Day. A long time ago, people thought our souls lived in our hearts. Some people believe that the power to think and feel came from the heart too. Today, we still talk as if our hearts had feelings. We say a mean person is heartless. Or we say a giving kind person has a big heart. Sweet smelling flowers remind people of love. Over the years, the red rose has become the flower of love. It smells sweet. Many people think red is the best color to show love. It is the color of the human heart. Cupid is, a, is pictured as a chubby baby boy. He has wings on his back. He carries a bow and arrow. Cupid was a Roman god. His mother was Venus, the Roman goddess of love and beauty. Cupid's father was Mars, the Roman god of war. Cupid was a happy little god. He wanted others to be happy too. He shot invisible arrows into people's hearts and made them fall in love. What can you do on Valentine's Day? The way we celebrate February 14th has changed since Roman times. We no longer celebrate spring on this day. It is no longer a day just for sweethearts. Valentine's Day is now a holiday for everyone. Giving and getting candy and cards on Valentine's Day is fun. You can do so many other things on Valentine's Day, and here are some ideas. Make your own Valentine for someone special. Bring flowers to someone who you haven't visited in a long time. Forgive someone who has hurt you. Visit a neighbor who is lonely or sick. Do something special to show a family member, a friend, or a teacher that you care about that person. I hope you like this book as a very, very, Nice book and happy Valentine's to everyone!